24 back with the live shot from Century Plaza Hotel and Spa, getting set for the winter season. Our chance to learn something too, because when it comes to winter fermentation, Ian Lai from the Richmond Food Security Society, ring the bell, school's on. Uh, what, what are we making again today? We're making kombucha. And why has kombucha become so popular? Uh, I just think people have realized that, that it's a really nice drink as an alternative to pop, and uh, it's healthy, it's good for your gut. Uh, most of the bacteria in your gut helps to regulate your, your you know, conditions, uh, and it really helps. It's, it's thirst quenching, it's easy to make, it's very inexpensive. You had me at inexpensive, because when you look at uh, what you pay on the market for it, uh, it's a bit of an investment, but uh, this is the end product right here. Mm -hmm. So what's happening in this, and then we're gonna go from start to finish. So this is a kombucha that's been fermenting for about two weeks, and you can see there's a layer of this film on the top, and that's called the SCOBY, or the mother. And, uh, what does SCOBY stand SCOBY for? SCOBY stands for Symbiotic Culture of Bacteria and Yeasts. That was my second guess. Right. right. And basically, it's a starter that helps to uh, create the fermentation and the bubbliness that's in the kombucha that you uh, bottle later on. And why uh, this type of lid on it? So it's just a piece of cloth, and basically it needs to breathe. It's a living culture. So you know, if you suffocate it, 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 it will basically die. So you want to have air breathing through it, uh, nice and clean, keeps the dust out, keeps the flies and the bugs and the fingers out of there. Okay, so if we're gonna start and build our own kombucha, the first ingredients we need? Uh, we need water, we need sugar, and we need a tea. So, so how much sugar content and what types of tea are you choosing for this? So for every liter of water, you use a quarter cup of sugar, and the tea, this is where you go crazy. You can use mate, you could use um, uh, rooibos, you could use black tea, you could use green tea, you could use any tea that you wanted. So you can decide what kind of flavor you want based on the tea that you use. And this is our baseline inside the pot. You probably That's right. won't be able to see this, France, but uh, okay, so we have our basic pot. What's happening right here? This is the mother or the SCOBY from the previous batch. So this is what it looks like, and it kind of looks a little bit scary, right? It's this jelly-like structure, and it grows on top. When you start it out, it sinks. And as it starts to ferment, it floats to the top and you get layers and layers. The more kombucha you make, the more layers you get. So the top mother's the, uh, the top layer's the mother, yeah. below that would be the grandmother, and below that the great-great-grandmother, and these mothers you give away so people can start their own batches. I've been to the farmer's market and they sell kits. I was like, what? You're making money out of these things that generally you would go, oh, what am I gonna do with it? Am I gonna compost it? Am I gonna eat it? Or, or what am I gonna do? Yeah. So a lot of companies are actually taking them and packaging them and selling them at the farmer's market. And basically, if you wanted to make your own and didn't have one, buy a bottle of organic kombucha, pour it into a, a, a bowl like that, cover it for probably about a week, mm -hmm. and you'll have a mother started on the bottom. Did like this mother Exactly right here. like that. Oh, interesting. Okay, so when we have these two, then we mm -hmm. just pour it into the big jar right here. Right. Let, and, and let it sit like that. That's right. Okay. So basically, you're just taking this, you're pouring it in, I don't want to spill everywhere, yeah. and then you just drop your mother into there, and you cover it, put an elastic band over it. And let it breathe. And let it breathe. Now, bottling is a crucial part of this, of, of the fermentation. How do you choose the type of bottle, and how long does it sit in the bottle? Okay, so you go through different kinds of fermentation. First fermentation is in the jar. Then you transfer it into, I like plastic bottles. I used to use glass bottles. But what happens is the fermentation continues in there and the pressure increases. So if you don't take the bottle and burp it, allow the gases to escape, the gases contain in the glass bottle. And if you forget about it, like me, the bottle explodes. And glass shards go like 20, 30 feet into your room and it's like really dangerous. So what I've done is I've decided to use plastic bottles. And as the plastic bottles get fatter, they'll probably just tip over. Mm. And then it says, hey buddy, it's time to either drink it or burp it, meaning just open the top and release the excess gases. And what flavors do we have right here? So with my first fermentation, I add different flavors. I have cardamom, I have rose syrup, and this one I have ginger. All right, this is awesome, because if you go to the store, you're paying, what, three to six bucks to do it, That's right? That's right. Per bottle. Per bottle. Okay, and this. All ingredients in, what are you cutting the cost to, would you say? Uh, probably under 30 cents. 30 cents? To make it, yeah. You yeah. collect the bottles from the recycle. Oh, man. You have a glass jar, everything else you have at home. There you go, sir. 
Cheers to you. Great lesson. Thank you. Greg Harper, over to you for winter preparedness of a different level.